Welcome back to God's Business, where I interview the top Christian influencers, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders on how you can create not just a good business, but God's business where he is the multiplier of your success. I'm here with a great friend of mine here today. See, I'm not in my studio for the people that know. And it's so awesome to have him watching him over the years. My wife and I actually used to listen to his music, which will be very easy to find after I mention his name. And on top of that, over the last few years, I've been able to see him create eight figure companies and it just blew my mind. I was like, how is this guy going from ministry and then building a business and incorporating both those together in a place that we would call God's business. So please welcome Mr. Rick Pino. What's up? Thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, let's do it. it. Let's do it. We just got done recording as well. So yes, on both we did. sides, well, tell them your show name real quick at the very beginning. so that Yeah, yeah. So we have a podcast as well. It's called Get Wisdom. Um, but they should watch this podcast instead. Well, I just thought if they're like, man, I just don't want to listen to this Rick guy. I want to, I want to hear more from Nicholas. I'm just yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, this is going to be a fun time uh, for give, give a short background and it could be long too on just your ministry background. You've been involved in ministry longer than you've been involved in quote unquote business, Sure, which is very interesting. Yep. That's been the career. That's what you've been known for from so many people. So break down kind of where you come from. Sure. hundred percent. Thanks for having me on here, bro. Yeah. I love this. I love what you guys are doing. Um, yeah. So my wife and I, we basically, we were full-time missionaries slash worship leaders um, for about over 20 years, about 25 years, traveled all over the globe, 79 nations, um, stadiums, trash dumps, um, Jewish synagogues, black churches, Latino churches, Asian churches, Asian, Jewish, black synagogues, like all of them combined and everything in between, everything you could imagine. Uh, did all of that and served, you know, just poured our, our hearts out to that, um, to that end. And in the past, it's been uh, about five and a half years now, really got involved in business. Here's what a lot of people didn't know, bro. We had more words about finances and business than we ever had about worship. And wow. that would that would blow some people's minds. And when I say words like, you know, people would come up and just speak about business and finance over us. And especially in the early days, bro, it'd be like, what? Like, you're off, dude. Like, you're off. Yeah. You know, like we're worship leaders, we're missionaries, like business finance. But it was so, you know how it goes, man. When, when God speaks a word, you just hide it in your heart and you're like, okay. And you just kind of brew over it and let it develop and become what it's supposed to be. And so about five and a half years ago, we, we started getting into business and to our jaw dropping surprise, it exploded for us very, very quickly outside of our, like our, our audience or Christian quote unquote fan base or whatever you want to call it. It just exploded for us in the marketplace. And one thing led to another. And now here we are five and a half years later, just going for it. Now, recently we've transitioned full time into business. Um, but I love what you were talking about earlier about the whole transition. I don't know if you could say that again, cause you say it way better than me. I, bro, I'm, I got questions first. Yeah, I can get, of course. I, I got to cut you off first. No, no, please. You, you had said something about words. And then we'll get back to this transition yeah, yeah, yeah. side is that you had these words about business while you're in worship as your main thing that you were doing. And it's very easy to see. So for someone to say, I see you traveling and singing, that could be true, but also at the same time, they could see you. We weren't doing business. When do you feel like the word became true? Because I also know people that have desires, they get a word for it. And then they're like, but it's not happening. For you, you kind of got the word, I'm not into that. But when did it become real where you're like, I think this word might be true and how long from that to the business stuff? Or was it when you actually finally started you, the business? You know what, ha like if I could just speak candidly, like when it started kind of becoming some somewhat of a, it's on my radar thing. I remember being early twenties, okay? Cause we came out of the gate, bro. My first record, I was a teenager, which is crazy. And so we came out of the, out of the gate super young. I remember being like 20 years old, 21 years old, and it was so interesting. I was out there on the road with all these like super well-known, you know, church mothers and fathers, guys and gals shaking nations, you know, just authority, awesome. And I'm like a kid who somehow got invited to lead worship at the thing that they were speaking at. So I was like, this is cool. And as a kid, I remember I wanted to serve these mothers and fathers. So I'd go volunteer on their tape tables. Some of them still had tapes back in those days, CDs, tapes, books. And I remember helping out at, on their, their merch table, but seeing, 
oh my gosh, I sold more CDs than her, than she sold books. Yeah. I am 20 years old. She is 55. And it began to unlock in my mind, bro. Like, wait a second. Do I? And no, no shade to that. Because thank God for those mothers and fathers in the faith. But I remember thinking, man, is this how it has to be for me until I'm 60 or 70? Just hoping someone invites me to come like sing at their church when I'm a 70 year old. Like what? So that was like the seed of it. And then, bro, for me, it unlocked. I was going to pick my daughter up from school one day. This is like six years ago. And there's a big line of cars. I drove to the back of the line so I can go wait to pick up my daughter. Bro, every single person was on their phone waiting for their kids. And I believe it was God. I heard where the attention is at, the harvest is at. Where the attention is at, the money is at. And I knew instantly, man, if I could make an impact all these people looking at their phone, if somehow I could make an impact where the attention already is, not only would I impact people, but I could also extract a harvest of money as well in business. And so that's that's kind of the two big like dominoes that went down in our journey. That's so good, man. Yeah. And when we had talked about this, this whole transitionary, one of the reasons I was impressed by you is we had talked about there are people, like my one of our pastors, Pastor John, he was a business guy and then went into ministry. And now he's like, he relates to business guys really well. And there was a purpose behind that. He relates to me. So I could see that journey of, of how that was used. And then and then he got saved and then went into ministry. Most of the people I see, and I see many right now, that are ex-pastors, whatever, ex-Christians, or just people that maybe aren't even in the best place with God. And then they go into business from ministry, right? They're like, uh, you know what, now I want more stuff out of life and I want more things or or I'm just walking away from this completely. And that's been the majority of when I see those two different ways. If I were to see the traffic going one way or the other, that's normally what I would see. One, I'm sure that most that some people think that about you just from a distance. They could say, well, if that's what I see only. Well, then maybe I think that. So I'd love to hear your perspective on it and also what the actual transition was like for you because obviously it's been different though it makes sense if people say 40 out of 50 people or 40 out of 42 people that went that way that was not good because I kind of yep. went through that I went from ministry into business and I thought it was my calling I failed so people are like told you kid like wow like you're off your call now they're all like oh my goodness you're on your call, you know, look how it all fit together. I'm like, where were you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, when I was like all by myself. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so for you, like, what was your it, perspective? You like? know, for me, like I'm sitting here thinking about it. The punchline for me is our North star has never changed. Our seasons change, but our North star, our primary life calling does not change. I don't believe it does. The assignments do, but the calling doesn't. Our North Star, bro, is I am called to build God a resting place, to build God a house. What does that look like in my perspective? Bro, I believe that I am a David in this generation. I'm called to build God a house that we adore him day and night with full-time singers, full-time musicians, and full-time, he, had, he called them gatekeepers, but administrative staff. And how did David fund this? Number one, he funded it all out of his own pocket. But number two, he funded it from his business exploits out there in the marketplace. And so, you know, thank God we've had a, a handful of really cool like ministry centers or day and night prayer and worship things. And I love all of them. I'm friends with most all of them and I love everyone, but they're all being built off of, I call it the, the missionary budget. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Which like, you know, live by faith type and of thing. Did that even exist? prior to the last like 2000 years like back then was there was that even a thing like a missionary budget or like i'm gonna do like they were like fighting battles running a kingdom a physical kingdom like it's just crazy i just never even thought about 100%, it you, you so may have like, more insight but i was like man did that i mean even for exist me before? like it, the again i'm not knocking anybody because i love everyone and i'm friends with most of them but the biggest thing is when david described him wanting to build a house for god he used two words that are just powerful together. He said, we're going to build God an exceedingly magnificent house, and we are going to do this 
by generating a ton of wealth from the marketplace. Yeah. Right. And so exceedingly magnificent that, in my opinion, takes a lot different budget than just like, hey, everybody, please sow your seed and give an offering. It's like, no, no, no. We want the best of the best of the best. So let's go generate wealth in the market to fund and fuel God's house, which then his presence funds and fuels what we're doing in the marketplace. And it's this beautiful, perpetual like uh, ecosystem that one feeds the other, one fuels the other, and the one fuels the other. So that's 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 what I'm on right now, bro. Yeah. A lot of people are like, oh, Rick, transition and this and that. Yes, I did because I'm still heading to my North Star. Um, we're just out A different making some money of, right it's quick. It's like the triathlon and you're on the- A hundred percent. You just got off the swim. I'm, I'm on the bike yeah, now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. That's good. Yeah, so you, you still kept it the same was that a difficult transition even like that's an identity shift and i think that's big for people you teach people even getting into business you said you had some new people as well that are like they're fresh and that's a difficult transition sometimes to go from anything to something different whether it's job to business business to a different business ministry to business what would you what's like your top skill sets or top ways that you're able to transition really well and shed whatever identity you had now the best thing would be that you have an identity in christ it's very difficult to not catch a little bit of your identity through the things that you do and if that gets taken away you sell a business you leave a job you leave ministry sometimes there can be a shedding what was your experience with that and what would you say to other people for me the the identity this is a number of years ago god began to work on my wife and i me specifically because it was not the case for her when i first started like I said, coming out the gate in the worship world as a teenager and then literally like almost overnight going from I just graduated high school to now I'm on stages in stadiums with all the biggest voices and thought leaders in in the church world. It was it was a big, quick shift over. And obviously in those days as a young man, my identity was in You know, I want to get known. I want to be famous. I'm, I want to be the guy. And so from that day, I feel like in those early days, God was already preparing me. And I can say, honestly, dude, after a few years of God dealing with my heart, as far as identity goes, my identity was not in, I am a worship leader. My identity was a hundred percent. I am a son of God. And there's one thing we're talking about David here a little bit earlier. It's interesting because David, he slayed giants and he was an adulterer, right? Like he was a businessman and he was struggling at fatherhood at times. And so for me, if I look at the life of David, you don't look at David and go, bro, you were an adulterer. You were a terrible dad or you were rich. You were famous. You slayed giants. David's identity wasn't in the good or or the bad of his life. I believe David's identity was in Psalm 27, four. One thing have I asked, one thing do I seek? Basically, I want one thing out of this life. I wanna dwell in your house, gaze on your beauty, and inquire in your temple. The, the, the nutshell of that all, I wanna have relationship with you. And so for me, my identity wasn't in how bad I've blown it or how, how much accolades I've got to to be a part of in the worship world, I was already in the place in my heart, I'm a son. And if that means I'm a toilet scrubber, I'm a son. And if it means I'm a uh, well-known worship leader, I'm a son. If it means I'm a businessman, I'm a son, right? So I think, thankfully to God, he's already been killing that in me for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah. So for, th- for us, for my wife and I, the transition publicly wasn't hard. Um, it was more so just the preparation behind the scenes, getting ready for the transition. Yeah, because I could even see that you weren't posting a ton of content before that. You yeah, I took I took like off. a year off of social. So was there a little bit of like back and forth on, on or were you just like, all right, guys, we're going into hunker down mode. One year from now, we're going to be producing content about business. No, you know what? It, that's a great question. So for me, it was literally we're going bananas on social. Social media is a grind if you're doing it right. <laughs> I, I had posted like nonstop for six years built a pretty large audience and I just got tired. I'm like I'm taking a break. Our businesses were already running in the background. My ministry that I was still doing at the time was still just running. 
I just took a break. I just took a year off from social, like whatever. And then whenever we were like, we should talk about business publicly. We just turn, turn the machine back on. And now the content shifted from all Bible, all, you know, Christian, whatever ministry stuff. Now it's just mostly business Yeah. with a Bible, you know, center. So, yeah. And the more you study Bible through the business lens, it's crazy how much you get it's from crazy. it. Even if you li- start getting into business and then you start listening to sermons, I started looking at people like, are, how are you guys not seeing this right now? Don't you understand that this is exactly because you just put on a whole new like set of eyes <laughs> yeah. and, and it unleashes it for you. One of the things I love about Joseph's story, and there's things about David, you said that I love things about what he's done as well but in joseph's story looking at the kind of end of it is he was able to look back and see how each piece kind of fit together and how it was god's plan the whole time though his wasn't awesome worship leader it was a little bit more junky than that but it was like he was able to see seasons that felt like they were pointless in our eyes and always saw that god was involved with it a lot of people i think the identity piece you said was really good for people to go I messed it up, I lost all my money, or I invested wrong, or I sat in a job too long, and I didn't go after my dreams, right? They say that the most wealthy place is the graveyard, people die at 25 and buried at 75. So if you're picking it up at 50, you've been dead for 25 years possibly, doing nothing that you care about. Now, I think the identity piece you talked about handles that, yet for you, your business guy, business content from worship leader, you're not actively trying to get gigs, When you look back, how do you reconcile those two and go, okay, God, I see how both of these fit together. You had me be a worship leader for X amount of years and then transition to this and not look at it and be like, why didn't I do this sooner? Like, do you have that vision already looking back going, oh, I see God, what you were doing with all of that? Or is it still kind of being played out? You know, I, I feel a little bit spoiled by God because um, you and I have talked about this uh, gentleman before. He's gone and passed away now, but amazing father in the faith. His name is Bob Jones. I actually got a word from Bob Jones when I was probably 20 years old, around that same season that we just talked about when I was just starting out kid. And then all of a sudden I'm, I'm in this world with all these moms and dads. Bob gave me a word. I never understood it till about a year ago. <clears throat> and he said, Rick, there's going to be three waves. He said, there's three waves coming and each, each wave is going to be bigger than the last. And he always spoke that over me. And I was always thinking like, what does that mean? But now it's funny that you said the triathlete thing, because for me, my North star is I am a David. I'm not just a priest. I'm not just a prophet. I'm also a King, even though I've been moving strong in the first two prophet and priests for the past 20 years. Now I'm growing into becoming a king. And so when Bob gave me that word, I didn't have a clue what it meant. But now I see, oh, the three waves. My first wave, and this is just my interpretation. It could go a little different. But the first wave, I spent 20 years leading worship all around the world, almost 80 nations. My second wave, I'm going to go out and do the business thing into the marketplace. And none of the waves stop, by the way. I think they crest into each other, right? And then for me, the third wave is, I'm gonna build God a physical house that is exceedingly magnificent with 24 seven day and night, full-time singers and musicians. And that's gonna be the big exclamation point towards the end of my life. And all of them just roll into the rest. So I think that's how it's going. So all that to say, I feel a little spoiled because God's kind of just been nudging me along the way, even though I'm too, too dull sometimes to understand what does it mean? God, you know, like, what does it all mean? But man, just following the breadcrumbs and the trail of everything. Um, so I have a lot of peace with where we're at right now, where we're going, even though a lot of people may misunderstand, I have so much peace because I know the North star. Yeah. And when they see, when they see it all unfold, then it becomes easier for them to understand. Wisdom is justified by her children. Right? So we always think like, you know, this is, you know, Nicholas is, what the heck is he doing? Like this is so dumb, but give it five years, give yeah. it 10 years. And like, oh, he was actually really smart. So you said you're operating now as a king, that, that section inside of business. What were the other two that you said? Priest, Pro- prophet, priest, prophet, and king. priest, and king. That's, that's really cool. Cause those are also three as well. Mm-hmm. And, and I would say that 
if you were to look at someone because of a time constraint, if they're being king, then we think often they'd be neglecting those other two areas, like their spiritual authority. Uh, and, and so when you look at that, how have you been able to maintain this? Because now you went from, you know, I'm worshiping, praying, prophesying in the ministry world. Now in the business world, that takes up a whole new section of time. How do you keep those those plates spinning of operating in those three things and not feeling like, you know, that's partially why I connected King's Brotherhood was I was like, man, like, I really feel that I'm supposed to put these together better, partially for me, because if, if I'm part of my day to day is I have to study scripture, I'm sure. like, this is, I want to integrate it. But it felt like sometimes I was in this weird limbo, at least in my mind. Like when I ask God about it, I don't think he's as judgmental as I am about it, but I'm like, <laughs> no joke, sure. bro. I'm like, I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, like I used to just sit there and do this stuff yeah. in that season. Now it's different. Am I not as good? But how have you, we do know that being equipped in those areas all the time, it's not like you just build a business and forget about God for five years. How do you spin those things together and and walk in power in those three areas? Because I feel like they could be done really well together. Sure. I, I think that, as long as we stay connected to Jesus through intentional time spent in prayer and worship and intentional time in his word, how could we not be all that he is as well? Jesus is the prophet. He is the priest. He is the king. David was a type and shadow. He was a prophet, priest, and king. So as we connect to God as men of God, because that's who the audience is here, how could we not it's, it's when we're connected to Jesus, Jesus seamlessly goes in and out of all of them, right? Seamlessly gives a word, makes a a kingly decree and ministers to the father all within 30 seconds of each other, right? So how could we not just, as we stay connected to him with intentionality, daily, fresh eye contact, bro, I'm a big fan of, it doesn't matter if it's 10 minutes or a hundred minutes, daily contact daily connect eyes with the father i'm here be still and know that i am god to shut it all down for for moments or for hours and say here i am god when we do that how could we not do what jesus did that's exactly who he is it's what he does and they all in my opinion seamlessly flow into one another so it's instead of the the way I process it, instead of compartmentalizing, well, I got to be a king here. Oh, shoot. And then I've got to be a priest. And then, oh, well, maybe do I have a word from heaven? Like maybe now I got to step out and give a word. They all happen together yeah. seamlessly when it flows from him as our source and not from us. It has nothing to do with our capacity. It has everything to do with our intention. And, and the spiritual component, I think is great because a four dimensional businessman we created was, was basically saying, Hey guys, I'd have guys all the time. I'm great at businessman, but you got to tell me what to do with this area of my life. And I'd be like, I like, you got to do it. Like you can't run away from that area of your life. You can't run away from your marriage. I can't go in there and fix it. You get help, but you're the one that has to spend time with your wife. You got to spend time with God. You can get every prayer underneath the book. You can download every worship song. So when I look at this prophet priest kingship together as well as like, you're not just, oh dude, I'm a business guy or I'm a ministry guy. Like, ah, well, maybe those are, you're actually this one guy that, that operates at all times in these things. And, and I think that if people saw it that way, they would stop kind of sectioning it off so much and kind of walk in hundred percent. Cause it's like, you know, if, if we compartmentalize those, those three areas, as far as prophet, priest, and King or four areas like King's brotherhood, if we try to compartmentalize those into their own things and not see them all as one, I think we're really damaging like our our mental state because now we're putting so much pressure on ourselves instead of just going i am a dad i am a husband um i like golf i'm a musician as well i'm all of these things all together all at the same time and at any moment like you and i are businessmen but we're also we love god yeah. So literally today we're going in and out of talking about business one second, given like million dollar plays out of this side of our mouth and revelations and oracles out of this side of our mouth. Cause that's who we are. Like instead of trying to compartmentalize, it's just, I think we need to let it all flow together, man. You know? Yeah. It's so good. You talked about your transition from ministry into business and how things took off really fast. 
I want to hear the story of it because I also want to take some of the key principles because for me, it wasn't like that. So it would have been nice to, if you would have quickened <laughs> this up. I, I, I really had seen a prayer miracle culture. So I went from relying on God, God, I have no money, I have nothing. I'm going to go pray for people in the streets and I would see miracles. I'd see breakthrough. I'd go on trips. I'd go with other great leaders where they, they've they worked really hard to set it all up and I just entered into what they did. They, sure. they had to plan the ministry trip. I just flew on the airplane. So I didn't really understand it. I didn't know Paul was shipwrecked. I kind of I, I knew, but I'd kind of block it on my mind. I was just kind of like, no, like we're not supposed to have any of that happen. And so when I got into business, I was just like, if I pray hard enough and I, then it'll work. And I tried to avoid the work because I thought that that was just me putting in like a, like literal works, like that works, me thinking mm-hmm. I could earn something also came with actual work. And it was very difficult because I'm good. a hard worker. I love to grind. And I was so afraid to grind because I thought that that was bad because of the miracle culture that I sure. got raised up in as a Christian. And so when I came into business, that was part of my failure was this fear to work too hard because I wasn't relying enough on God. You had this transition. You said things blew up really quickly. Kind of show me how you healthily did it. And we can maybe break down some of the sure. ways people can do it well. We talked about earlier, one of the big unlocks for you guys was the mentorship. A hundred percent. So the unlock for me was as soon as I saw those people in that school line looking at their phone, I was like, I need to learn how to market because I don't know how, and everyone's here and I need to get there. So how the heck do I get from where I'm here to there? So dude, I started searching, Googling marketing sales. I didn't know what the language was is sales, marketing, marketing, sales, yeah. you know, like I didn't social know what media, yeah, social posting. media, yeah, yeah. marketing, like <laughs> I, I just searching, like, you know, it's the Goo Goo Gaga when you're first starting to talk. And so thankfully all these marketers started hitting me with ads, yep. right? Buy my thing, sign up for my deal and come through my funnel and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, this is cool. What's going on? And so one guy in particular really caught my attention. It was Ty Lopez. Um, and it was back in his, Hey, I'm here in my garage with my, don't look at my Lamborghinis. Look at my books, you yeah, know, yeah. like marketing, you know? And I was yeah, like, who my is this? Yeah. In my garage. Yeah. Like, look how cool my books are guys. And even though my two Lambos are sitting there, don't care about those, but look how cool my books are. And so I was kind of in, in that wave with Ty stuff. And even though it wasn't a mentorship, I purchased a course. And it was a $5,000 course. It was like the biggest purchase my wife and I had ever made outside of like a down payment on a house type thing. Like, oh my gosh, 5,000 bucks. And after going back and forth, you know, wrestling, it's so much money. Like, should we do it? I don't know. What if it's a scam? All this stuff, all beginners go through. We invested. Okay, we're doing it. And so I paid the 5,000 bucks purchase the, it's not even coaching calls, bro. It's no support. Yeah. It's literally like, cool. Thanks for paying me. Here's the login. Yeah. Good luck. You know, it's like one of those. And so I purchased a course. I started going through it. And one thing about my wife and I, bro, we take action. We are action takers. So literally went through lesson one, pause, went and did lesson one, went through lesson two, pause, went and did lesson two. We just did that, bro. Within six months, we had a marketing agency with almost 30 clients and we had done about over a little over $900,000 in six months. Just again, no support, no mentorship, no coaching, just a course and taking action. Yep. So what, what happened from there was, is we basically made our first million from there. We're freaking out. Oh my gosh. Cause you know, we had never brought home a million from the ministry our ministry had done a million plus before, but never take home. Yeah. And because it was a marketing agency, it was mostly profit. We were like, what is happening? So we took the profit of that company and started another company. And this time we got smarter. We're like, let's join a mentorship. So we started getting mentors and that's how it just went so fast for us. We just took the money, invested it into a new business, invested it into new mentors. And to this day, bro, it's still the game that we're playing right now. Whatever profit comes in, we invest it back into the business and into more coaching and mentorship to get more plays from people who are smarter than us and keep on rolling it into itself. Yeah, because even it's interesting. I had someone working on my house and they reminded me exactly of this young guy who's making about 60K a month doing LinkedIn lead generation. 
And this guy looked exactly the same. He was kind of the general contractor of the job. And I was sitting there probably like, man, this guy might make like five to seven K a month, right? Mm -hmm. Like, but that guy is exactly like this other kid, but where he grew up and the things he's explored, he hasn't, he went to the, they do construction. Who's making the most money. Oh, I want to go that way. And this other kid showed up to a a marketing event and he goes, Oh, the opportunity is here. So I love that you guys one, if people are listening to this show, then they're getting, again, access to some of the highest profit, most available stuff that's happening right now. This isn't a become a general contractor podcast. Yet, when I look at yours, it was like you got into social media marketing, which is pretty lucky because that's like a... It's a humongous skill needed and, to... And, and, it's, yeah. and it transfers with you. So like 100%. you're like, you can use it for all your stuff. That was lucky. But then also this, the smart thing that you did of getting in the new rooms of like, all right, but that's if I want to scale the agency, profit margins go down, more people, I have to sell it to make money. Is that the direction I want to go? So it's the kind of this weird balance of like, do you stick with this one thing and just scale the agency or do you keep transferring? How did you guys keep doing that? Because even what you're doing now that you've gone all in on is different than when you had done before and you had lots of things going. and, And so how did you guys make those decisions when to stay all in? Like everyone would say, stay focused. But if that general contractor stays focused, bro, he's just going to... 100%. He's he'll he'll be, plateau. Yeah, there's yeah. got to there's be a new way to do it. And so you guys kind of did that. For us, I so I always tell my students this, new levels require new lanyards, right? And so if you ever want to go to the new level, you've got to get into new rooms with new people yeah. who are much <laughs> smarter than you. Yeah. Get that new lanyard on because really it's it's people who are ahead of you that are going to be able to enlighten you, inspire you. Uh, say it different, think about it different. And obviously like as entrepreneurs, and this is something that we did, we, all of us entrepreneurs have entrepreneur ADD or, you know, ADHD, whatever it is. And so we did, you know, five and a half years ago, we started a marketing agency. Then we started this thing. Then we started that one. Then we started over. And before I knew it, bro, I had like seven businesses that I'm like, yeah. But the problem was, is all the businesses at the, at that time were only doing like couple hundred K here, 500 K there, 90 K here, million five there. So it's like all these okay things spinning. And I'm like, for the ego, it's like, I got seven businesses. Yeah. But it's so dumb because I didn't realize instead of putting out a little energy here, a little energy there, a little energy here, I needed to double down, triple down on one thing or two, but mainly one and just put all the energy into that thing. Yep. So part of me taking a break from social this past year was literally me just slowly closing out, sunsetting some of these other things and putting all of my energy into the new thing. So, you know, I think anyone watching it's, you know, to have this idea, like I got 47 businesses. Yeah. It's, it sounds cool on paper, but at the end of the day, the, what matters in business is like, are you profitable? Like, okay, cool. You got 47 businesses. Are any of them cash flowing? Do you, are you making profit? Like, yeah. you know, and it would be much better to have a business that's making a ton of profit than 47 that none of them are doing anything. Cause you have too many hands in the pot yep. and you're trying to do too many things all at once. You and know? I think a good takeaway for the people is even when you're starting, you sometimes have to, like I, I was selling things on Craigslist. Things. Yeah. I was remodeling homes. I was doing the health coaching. And then I saw, all right, out of all of these, I can run with this health coaching. And that's what we ran with yep. before we started Kings or Billion Dollar Brotherhood and then Kings Brotherhood. And and even for yours, people do that with products. Kings Brotherhood right now, we've committed this year to just doing that mastermind for that product. Because I know that as soon as, it, until that's set up well, if I split to these, oh, well, we could do an introductory here and we could do this product here and this product here, products can be like that, where sure. you just have three offers. Sure. And so you end up making if Everyone's you make a million confused. bucks. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I'm making a million bucks. All right, now I'm going to do three offers, and then you make like 300k, 300k, and 500k, and you would have been at 1.5. You just focused on the one. Exactly. And there's obviously nuances to that. No really big business has one product for for everything. Sure. Yet, unless a product is fully built and structured, then as soon as you take your eyes off of it, it's going to go down. Yeah. And until until it's done right. And so I just think that that was a for, for people listening, I, I just I really want them to see and they're going to want to see that 
there's like steps that they could take away from each one. And yep. products is one of them, businesses is one. But I like what you said too, like these skills compound into one another. Yeah. Like the social media thing, that absolutely served all my other stuff. And then whatever, like sales, that absolutely serves yep. everything else. I didn't know it, it was just like, okay, and we're like accidentally stumbling into all of it. On knowing that, wow, all of this stuff is compounding on itself to where, you know, we, we just uh, started our new company about six months ago that I'm giving everything to just all in on. And my brand new company with all my compounded skills is already going to way surpass anything I've ever done quicker than I've ever done it because now all these skills have compounded and I'm giving all my focus instead of like, here's my 13 different little pies that I'm trying to, you know, be yeah. cool and my ego feels good because I got got 27 businesses, like, you know. Yeah, well, and and I see you did what was in front of you. And like, I did the weight loss stuff because I lost weight. And yep. there was many other ways I could have done it. Like you, the, Russell Brunson has this great, like four attractive characters where he talks about like the reluctant hero, the reporter that's like, like what I'm doing right now, I'm just bringing in people the guru and expert and then there's one other but the the that I thought I had to be the guru right and for you you could have never been this leader that you're being now without first going through that because you wouldn't be able to teach people what you're teaching now but also you had the social media stuff right in front of you and I believe every person listening has something in front of them yes. that they could be doing to run a business and maybe you have to do that first before you one start teaching people yep. you've built all this revenue you've done this now you can do what you're doing now, which I think is just, it's cool to see. And and I, I wanna see from your side, with your guys' businesses and what you've been through now, there's gotta be a reason why you guys teach what you teach. What opportunities do you see for guys out there that are already running companies? What's the thing that they could be doing right now to take either the company to the next level or an extra revenue source that's like, bro, have you bolted this on now? These are the, This is the next opportunity for them. I mean, for me, there, there's a lot of them, right? But the easiest one, the the lowest hanging fruit for everybody watching right now, in my opinion, is digital products, bro. It's just take your knowledge, take your ideas, take your expertise, roll it into a course, roll it into a program, roll it into an ebook, roll it into something, you know, roll it into all three of those things and make a program out of it and sell it for a higher ticket. It is the lowest hanging fruit. Everybody has an idea. Everybody has experience. Everybody has expertise, whether it's, I'm not an expert. I've just been a barista for 14 years. Yes, you are. You're an, you're way more of an expert than me. And there's yep. a ton of people that would love to learn from you or just like, man, I've just, I've been a car salesman for 23 years. Like I'm not an expert of anything. Yes, you are. Yep. So for me, the low hanging fruit, the extra bolt on that's like no brainer is digital products. Literally. And what I tell my students is literally this talk to your younger self, like in that, in that course, in that webinar, in that book, just coach your younger self. Hey, if you're just starting out, do this, 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 and this, put it into a package, put into a webinar, put into a course, put into a program and sell it. No brainer, extra income on the side, bro. I was hoping you'd go down that route. Look at teachers, like they could build a homeschool academy. Oh, like 100%. It's crazy. And the teacher's like, you know, they're, God bless them. They're, it's not a high income sure. space unless you're in a crazy university or unless you own those criminal universities. And, and then I look at plumbers. A plumber can teach other plumbers, right? There's a, a coaching company called Million Dollar Plumber. A hundred percent. Yeah. We and both then, know them. And then, and then, yeah. Especially if you've done even six figures in your, your area of expertise, you could literally call it the six figure blank fill in the blank of the thing that you did six figure barista like tons of people would be like what i'm a barista i want to make six figures and they would totally be interested in your thing right yeah six figure plumber which i think that's the guy's name or seven figure yeah, plumber seven whatever figure, it is yeah. you know like whatever it is six figure x seven figure x to your digital product and boom yeah like there it is yeah because i have guys that do construction and they've done 10 million i have guys that do 100 tile dude. showers and this guy has gotten sixty thousand followers now all he does is show the the showers that he's tiling and he's like do you think that i could do one of the two right i could show people how to do diy projects and do low ticket whereas obviously i push him into how are you one leveraging social media to get jobs that could go for any service Two, how did you build this where you just took an expertise of tiling 
showers and someone could literally leave their job, go generate leads this week and start tiling yep. showers for three to 10,000 bucks a piece. Yep. And that could literally change someone's life. hundred percent. And, and that's, that's where it's like, ble like blesses the person that sells the thing that they have yes. that people need. Yes. Yes. But also you talk about Solomon a lot and maybe break this down for the false belief side. Solomon got wisdom by, from God, which was a gift. Which is crazy because people don't, sometimes don't think about their actual skills as a gift. And, and I think this relates to the next part where he would have people pay him annually in animals and money and spices and all these things to sit under his wisdom and listen, which I think is really crazy because if you look at church, that'd be the craziest thing you could do. God gave me a gift of wisdom. Instantaneously, I was able to execute on it immediately afterwards with my, my next situation. And then he took it and he actually monetized, monetized. which is just like, yeah, like, and that's just one way he monetized. He monetized like tons of different ways. Tons. Dude. And yeah. that was just one, right? Was this way of, he had something he had done and people were like, Hey, if I give you this, can I come and I'll pay you every year just to learn and sit underneath you, which is kind of what you're talking about. He wasn't too busy to do that for him. Can you kind of explain to people that that biblical side of it? Because I feel 100%. that there's sometimes this like mental block for people. Yeah, and I, I won't, I won't. I have a whole entire teaching on it. I th actually, I think I taught it at uh, King's Brotherhood. Yeah. But basically, I, not to go super deep into it, but one of the elements was Solomon was a consultant to his contemporaries, right? So he was a business consultant. How do we know this? Because the Queen of Sheba came, right? She heard of his wisdom, and the Bible says according to the glory of his God. So she didn't just hear about Solomon's wisdom. She heard about God's glory that was on Solomon yeah. that gave him wisdom. So she sent her people first and they were mind blown. Girl, you got to go consult with this guy. She comes to see him. The Bible literally says when she saw the wisdom of his cup bearers, Yep. <laughs> of his servants like she hadn't even seen Solomon yet and there was so much excellence and luxury and wealth and riches and wisdom on everybody in his ecosystem then she talks to Solomon the Bible literally says the breath was taking out from her she she fainted basically at how wow. much excellence and wisdom was around not just on the man but around his people Wow. That's another level of wisdom right there, bro. That's another level of wealth. Another level of luxury is when your people win with you. Yeah. Another. That's another thing for another time. But anyways, it's interesting because if you do the math, not counting what you said, the the spices and the animal and the sil animals and the silver, just counting the gold, the Bible says that the Queen of Sheba paid him equivalent to two hundred million dollars worth of gold. And the Bible also says, and all the kings of the earth came to consult with him. So let's just say conservatively at that time, there was 75 to 100 kings on the planet. That's conservative, right? A hundred kings paying him $200 million each. And not to mention, the Bible also says they all brought their gift year after year. So it was on a continuity program that was one stream of income worth billions and billions and billions of billions where everybody, all the Kings on the earth paid him 200 million a year just to get wisdom. How do I run my kingdom? So I could be somewhat like yours, yeah. not to mention his commerce, not to mention his speaking, not to mention, you know, the, the ships that were bringing back and forth all the goods, not to mention all the other business deals, not to like yeah. so many yeah, other streams. How, how did he leverage all that money to make more money? Like, oh my smart gosh, man, would. it's crazy, yeah. dude. It's yeah. crazy what Solomon was up to. Yeah. One thing that I think is so big, I talked about this. It just can't get off my mind because some guy posted and said, I sat in the back of the plane didn't go to first class, which means that if I invest this money over X amount of years, I'm going to have 17 grand or whatever. And it hit me because it's like, it's still being controlled by money because you're going, what's the best money investment rather than where does God want me? Sure. And I think there's a balance to it, but it's like, is there never supposed to be someone in first class that's a Christian? <laughs> or are those guys just not supposed to be ministered to? But then you take that bigger. There's some country clubs that are 250K initiation. Mm-hmm. There's neighborhoods that are multi-million dollar 
just to have a spot is the whole neighborhood is that neighborhood never supposed to have a christian at it no one's right. no those good, guys bro. don't get ministered to because even if they had the money that's just not smart as if like god needs you to be so smart with your money that like you have to sit in the back of the plane or else those dollars he can't use that he can't do both at the same time it's just mind-blowing there are some rooms and some conversations you cannot have unless you are wealthy yes you can't get into some of these rooms if you're broke you can't have some of these conversations if you're broke you have to become wealthy and i love what you're saying because do those people just not get to have someone witness to them do yeah. they not get to have a light or, or salt and you keeping in your their money life? is more important than them getting right w- witness right. to good, which is bro. also crazy as if god cares how much money you die with and it's less about the yeah we're called to multiply but i told someone the other day if you died a billion dollars in debt or the billion dollars in your pocket the actual billion dollars on each side literally is completely pointless like there's not like oh wow like you have all this money you can take with you now are we called to be good stewards yes but also if god tells me to spend every dollar that i have to join this one membership to meet one guy and that guy gets impacted accepts jesus was that a smart thing to do which is just crazy because the world will give us this logical blueprint and it's good it's also godly god could have he showed us exactly how to build the noah's ark like he told him exactly how to do it he didn't have to deviate it was exactly how it was supposed to be done he didn't throw a curveball at him at the last second and be like double it you know it's just (laughs) he gave him the blueprint i believe he does that but there's that and you i bring that up because of solomon I've been getting convicted because sometimes there's things that I could do in my life to represent God and what what his kingdom would look like, but it would take a financial investment. And for Solomon, yep. I asked if Queen of Sheba came to my house, would she be saying God's here? Yeah, would, would her breath be taken from her? Oh my god. Just from gosh, the way I live my insane. life. Yeah. Now maybe the people, we make deposits in people and she go, "Wow, these people are just they think differently." Yep. I think she would say that right now. Yep. But there's things that I go, oh, like, is that smart? I don't know if I should do that. But if I were to go, man, if I were to represent Christ and God and his kingdom through what I have, I'm like, I would replace that AC unit right now <laughs> for the people that come over. They would be yeah. in a perfect climate. I wouldn't wait for it to break yeah. because is that smart? Bro, How? W- what do we do with that now? This whole the queen was shock and awe. What does that mean for us? now if solomon did it then i mean i have no clue sure sure i mean i don't i don't know if i have the full answer either but i know for for my perspective is every single one of us are on a different part of our journey right you talked about um um oh gosh uh joseph you talked about joseph earlier bro joseph whenever he was a kid with the mantle of many colors he was not quite ready to be the assistant to Pharaoh yet. Yeah. Right. And so for those who are listening right now, they're like, well, man, I'm, I'm not filthy rich. Like I'm not, I haven't, I'm in the the season like Nicholas when his first three years, when he was struggling, trying to figure it out. And like, yeah. you know, for those who are listening, who are in that position, dude, go through the process, man. Ask God for wisdom. James five, like if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously and abundantly right like just ask him for wisdom right and and he's going to give it but i also think the caveat to that is it's not just we see solomon's story and we're like oh the way that god gives wisdom is he just magically poofs it into our mind or our heart and woohoo we're wise now no a lot of times if you ask god for wisdom he might give you problems to solve yeah you know God, I want wisdom. Okay, cool. Here's a couple of new problems and a couple of new situations. God, give me wisdom. I'm trying to. Yeah. Right? How would how would you solve this, son? Wow. Right? Like, oh, okay, God. You want me to actually use my brain? Yeah, I do. I want you to grow in wisdom. Right? So I think we can't we can't complain like, man, I'm I'm in the season like like Nicholas, where you know I'm trying to figure it out and I'm not I'm not rolling in the dough yet. That's fine. Like whatever is in front of you right now grow in that be faithful with that steward that to the best of your ability like you're already there right yep i think that's a big reason a big way that we can grow in wisdom yeah and i see that even with the joseph example all the problems he was given he was also equipped like he he ended up doing well in them it wasn't like 
he's he he went to slavery and he stumbled around until he figured out how to do everything. He was like, no, no one had to worry about anything besides what they ate. And he's like, went to jail. Oh, they didn't have to worry about anything besides what they ate because he just did well. But that's not great. That could be like a janitor job. Like if everyone's yeah. like, no one in the janitorial service had to do anything besides eat lunch because Nicholas cleaned the toilet so well. 100%. And it's like, okay. Yeah, like and how did Joseph get the wisdom that qualified him in Pharaoh's eyes to go, dude, yeah. you are out of control. I need you right here next to me right now. Here's my ring. Here's my robe. You're the man. Yeah. Besides me, you're the man. What was it that qualified him to be recognized by Pharaoh in that way? It's being faithful along the journey, bro. Yeah. You know? So giving excellence to, to where you're at. And when God expands it, and maybe it's time to go from giving excellence all alone, like Joseph at that point, sounds like he wasn't like running big teams. Then all of a sudden it's like, now it's time to come with a different strategy. Maybe it's time to hire now. And that's now your next season of, of excellence. Whereas right now it may be, you know, cleaning your room. And like, yep. even for me, like, yep. I'm like, I don't do a good job cleaning my room. Like, <laughs> right. like people walked in, they weren't be like, man, God's been here. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, there they was take their breath fight. away, but in a different kind yeah, of way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, which I just think there's something to that. Sometimes we think so much about uh, just a different dimension or different realm that we, we forget to give excellence in our current environment, in our businesses, in our families, with our kids and how that can be recognized and minister to people. But that was so good, man. Sorry for, I, to throw you down. No, I, I love it. I, I think I have learned this about God. God's eyes are always watching. Um, and he's always taking note of who is actually multiplying the thing that I gave to them. Wow. Um, always that that's, there's parables of it. Jesus told us about it. And be, why is God watching over that over our lives? Because that's what he does. Mm -hmm. anything that's in God's hands multiplies and thrives and flourishes. And he's calling us to do exactly the same. I'm going to give you a promise of a gigantic Oak tree. Maybe there's people listening right now. Like God promised me I'd be a multimillionaire. God promised me I'd, you know, fly in private jets. Cool. Why, why, what's going on now? Well, you know, I'm just, I drive a Honda civic bro. And it's like 13 years old. Like it's all beat up. Okay. It's my conviction. God supplies the seed, but we supply the faithfulness. Yeah. Right. So it's like, God's like, dude, there's already the Oak tree is already in the acorn. Yeah. The promise is already in your potential, but you got to flesh it out. You got to multiply the potential. So you got to show up every day and actually take that thing wherever you're at in the season and you got to always make it better. Right. You always, always got to multiply it. Yeah. I love that. That example of the talents the guy who didn't multiply and how often does this happen if you were to talk to your sales team this is probably their only objection nowadays is he was afraid afraid to lose it all it's like i did i didn't i didn't do anything i buried it because i was afraid to lose it and how often do we make decisions like that and that even calls me out is like you know when i'm thinking about what you're talking about i'm going ah, oh. like i got areas in my life right now that i haven't multiplied it just because i've been afraid of x something that would happen, something to go wrong, afraid of whatever. And I'm like, that's the same mistake that homie same made thing. too. He was like, he, now this, this will mess with some people right here. So that the whole idea of in the Bible talks about the wealth of the wicked stored up for the righteous. This is crazy. So in that parable of the talents, okay, he gave one guy, one, one guy, two, and one guy, five, the guy with five multiplied it to 10. The guy with two multiplied it to four. The guy with one, as you're saying, got scared, buried it. This is crazy. Jesus told us in the parable, when the master came back, he goes to the guy with five and he goes, well done, good and faithful servant, right? Goes to the guy with two who turned it into four. Well done, good and faithful servant. Goes to the guy with one and he goes, where's my interest? Oh, I knew you were a hard master. I knew you were going to do this and I got scared. So here's your one back. What did the master say to him? you wicked servant yep. take what I gave to him and give it to the yep. well done, good and faithful, the wealth of the wicked stored up for the righteous. Wow. Right. Yep. Like I don't want to be wicked quote unquote in that way of like, I was scared God. Yep. No, I want to be one who takes whether it's the one, two or five, I'm going to do my best to multiply it, double it at least. 
because that's what the master's looking for. Yeah, and is uh, it we always say the 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 rich get richer and the poor get poorer, and I'm like, well, I mean, they do. I like that. Yeah, it's because of the mindset. And the the crazy part about the people that doubled was it says now enter into the joy of your master. And so there's also joy in the mm. in the process of the multiplication that there's like we get to enter into, man, boom, poof, like you get a whole different thing, which is also messes with people too. It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, 100%. I'm gonna get joy from doing this, but dude, this has been so fun to just wrap back and forth. And yeah, thank you, man. Uh, I know that that we just did a show together as well. We yep. talked about that. Maybe now's the time they can go check that out and yeah. and kind of see the opposite. We talked about sales and we talked a lot about core things that would work there. What do you guys normally drop over there and where are the places that they can get connected with your stuff? Yeah, I mean, just at Rick Pino all over the internet. Um, the The podcast is called Get Wisdom with Rick Pino. Um, that's it. Yeah, cool. this is my name. Yeah, and and obviously it's around these concepts of, of wealth and abundance through the current ways that you can do it. You talked about one of them on the show. And, and also with that, around this, this topic of wisdom, which yeah. I think is really cool. It's like... Yeah. If you look at wisdom was given to Solomon to do what he was called to do, you know, and that was, that was his ex. That's what he went after it for. And that convicts me, bro. I'm like, bro, if I was, if I was in the old Testament, I'm like, I don't even know where I'd be. I'm like, I'd have been like, yo, I want to <laughs> succeed. And he was like, I want to lead your people and like do, do things correctly. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, all right. I'm like, God, yes, I want to do that. You know, it's like, man, like why, where does this come from? So it's cool to, to know that, through wisdom is everything that these people want and obviously they get it with you guys so i appreciate 100%. it man this has been an awesome episode appreciate it bro thanks for having me man thank you boom yeah <laughs>